Hey, everyone. Before we get started, I just wanted to remind you, for the most up-to-date information on mortgages in Indy's real estate market, go to hardworkingmortgageguys.com. That's hardworkingmortgageguys.com. I'm Rick Ripman, the hardworking mortgage guy, and I've been I've had the honor of working with over 5,200 mortgage borrowers, helping each one find their best mortgage option. As a certified mortgage planner, I know my team and I can guide you through the process and make uh, make it an easy uh, step and a, a, an easy process to go through, as easy as it can be in mortgages. Ian is not available today, so Ian will not be joining us. But I have somebody I'm really excited about. I have known Kim, it's Kim Meeker, and I have known her for, we established 28 years. I thought it was longer, it seemed longer. Um, and we sold a, a new homes together at a builder. Um, and now she picked up, she moved, she went to California, and she is one of the queens of the California real estate market. She is phenomenal. And I think she's actually, which we'll find out, I think she's thinking about opening some uh an office here in Indiana, so it'll be in both areas. So I am really excited about it. I can tell you Kim's a wonderful person. She has a tremendous work ethic. Kim, thanks so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Well, <laughs> um, <laughs> well you, it's a little easier when I've known somebody as long as I've known you. I mean, not that we communicate all that much, but it is I, – I just feel like, you know, it's funny how Facebook does now. By just staying on Facebook and, and LinkedIn, you get a pretty good idea of what's going on in people's lives, and you feel like even if you don't see them all the time, you know them. So do you feel the same way? Yeah, I do. Yes. I do. I feel like we've, honestly, I feel like, you know, really even all my friends um, back in Indy as well, like, I just feel like we just never skipped a beat. You know, you could pick up the phone and it's like you were just together yesterday, practically yeah. with Facebook. But it is nice having, having that. Yeah, I noticed it with my kids. My kids, they, they, when they got together with their cousins after months and months, it was like they never left, where when I was a kid, it was not that way. It was, you know, you kind of had to get to re-know them again, but they never felt like they didn't because they were with them all the time on the social media front. So w with that, I, I normally I start with finding out how you got into, into it, but let's, let's real quick just jump into the social media. It appears to me you do a lot on social media. Is that, is that one of your, your focal points? It's, it, it, it is, Absolutely. Um, it's definitely being, you know, trying, it's, it's a way for you to stay belly to belly with people when you can't be face to face, right? right. Absolutely. Social media is definitely key. Um, I think whether it's relationships or in, in sales or running a business, you have to be in front all the time. And it's nice that we have social media that we can leverage today because back when you and I started in, in, in home sales, period, there was no social media. I think we were just... I think we're, I'm going to totally date us here. I think we we're just getting pagers. <laughs> yeah, well, I, yeah, well, I think we were getting <laughs> pagers. I, I remember that while we were there, I got my first cell phone. <laughs> yeah. I think one of our bosses actually had the big, the big old like uh, construction cell phone. Remember the big case yep. you had to carry around with your phone inside of it? Oh gosh. Yeah, that's th those days are gone, thankfully. Yeah. But that got us to where we are today. So it's yeah. it's awesome. Now, you even have a social media manager. Is that correct? I do. And and she helps. I, I'm assuming, so if, I, if I'm a real estate agent out there and I'm listening, how important do you feel that is, is to have somebody doing your social media? Is, 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 that, a, is that a high net worth item to have, have, have done for you as a, as a real estate agent? So it really just depends um, where you're at in your business, right? So a solo agent, someone that's just getting started with their business may have a lot of sweat equity time to put in and do their own social media uh, management themselves. And I, I highly recommend that they do in the beginning just so that they can understand how the platforms speak to each other, how everything works. Um, and it also helps it to remind them to stay on social media, right? Because uh, just like anything, you can do it for a week or two, and then you forget and you get busy with all the other things that are going on and you forget to do it. So a solo agent can absolutely do it by themselves. Once you start to 
gain momentum and you have more business, you want to leverage, right? So then you take the next step and you can hire an in-house marketing manager, you can hire um, a virtual assistant marketing manager, or you can hire a company to do it. So when I first, when I took my social media and I decided to have someone help me with that part-time, um, I hired someone to do that for me part-time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's I, I, it leveraging is very important. You, but I, but you always have to get going on your own first. It's kind of yeah. like follow up, and this is taking us back to the to the Estridge days, the new home construction days. When I was there, I had the, the first follow up system I had was a was a what are they called a, a a box that was you put recipes a recipe box right? I had two Black of box them. That we all had. Yeah, I had two of them. Five cards? It's yeah. like a roller yeah. card? Exactly. And I had one that was dated by when I needed to do the follow-up and one that was dated by their it was done by their name. And and then I was the first person to go get a computer. And I put a I put a program on it cuz my brother was a computer person and I used that. But even before that, it went from the it went from that box, it went to a um, a typewriter that had a memory. <laughs> You could say, and I had yeah. two of those, one with uh, people's names and one with the, the uh, uh, what I was going to send, the letters I'd pre-written so I could do that. Uh, anyway, but then you well, get, okay. you, let, yeah. me, let me remind you of something though. Like this is how, um, what an impact that you made on my, on my life 28 years ago in the beginning of my career. Um, in home sales, even though I had the, the mortgage background before I came into new home sales, but um, learning how to work with customers coming, whether it's coming in the door in a sales model or not, what you taught me was invaluable. I use it to today. You taught me how to use that black box. You remember you actually did some um, sales meetings, and you said, well, Rick uses this, and this is how he uses his three-by-five cards. And then if you remember, we moved it over to a filing system. Then once I took the, the lead sheet, then I put it in the, the filing system. Right. And then you, my friend, actually are the one that turned me on to ACT, which was my first. Yep. Well, the, the black box was the CRM, right? But right. Uh, then ACT became our CRM, and I had the hardest time getting away from app, even when I moved out to San Diego and learning to use a different CRM because I was looking at like Top Producer, some other CRMs that were, I was being introduced at that time to coming into the resale market. And so, but that app, you, my friend, you're the one that introduced me to that program. Well, so you know, you know it's, I, I knew I introduced a lot of people. It's really nice to hear that somebody else actually used it. <laughs> because you, as you know, as you know, there's probably many people you've done the same thing for, and many of them never actually use it. And that's that's nice to hear that you used. I'm glad you did. And I I think I personally believe it's one of the reasons that I've been successful in 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 what I do is because I have a very strict follow up system, and I yes. do that. And I'm guessing that's a big piece of what has driven you and grown your business is that you you had a system. Yeah. Yeah, that would be yeah. that would be my guess. It's, so, very, sim it's very simple, right? It, it just yes. starts with the system that you have. Um, you know, it's like they say, you know, the best site CRM is the CRM that you use. The best follow-up right. system is the follow-up system that you use. You have to, It's the money is in the follow-up, right? The relationships are in the follow-up, right? Right. Yes. It's important for anybody to do that. And it's also important, I think, it's inv invaluable for that customer that you stay in touch with them. And and they and as you just said, they actually, it's the relationship. They actually become more than just a customer. They become friends because you talk to them all the time. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you can follow up. And, and, again, go back to social media. If you join them on their social media sites, you're now seeing them a lot. You're seeing what happens in their life. The milestones of their life all show up, and you do feel a connection that you don't have if you if you don't have the the that. But it, you know the social media. But you also need to follow up. You also need to call them once in a while. We call every one every quarter. We call every single customer that's done business with us. 
you know, and a lot of people forget about those those ones. And I know you do the same thing because I was reading some of the stuff you were doing, and it's like, dang, she's doing the same thing I'm doing. <laughs> because it works, right? It works. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. So how did you end up getting into real estate? And I, and I guess let's, let's keep it to, like, how did you end up doing it in San Diego? I, I think it's fascinating. I'd like to actually get started before San Diego because I have told everybody ever since you did it, I'm like, I, I mean, I'm impressed as can be because she just, you picked up your entire family and you moved to San Diego. And that takes an amazing amount of belief in yourself and commitment and gumption or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> How did you do that? Well, so even before Estridge, you know, so a little bit about like my, my personality and just who I am. I've just always been, you know, um, I've just always had a fire internally inside of me and I've just always had dreams and I'm just, I, I made a commitment to myself at a very young age that I'm never going to give up on my dreams. I will never ever give up on my dreams and whatever, you know, with that, everybody has a different meaning for that, I think, and um, what it means. But at a very young age, I was disappointed a lot by adults and, and stuff. And I just, I, I always was the quiet one, believe it or not. And I just sat back and I just took everything in and I was always paying a lot of attention to everything, right? And I just, you know, I just made a commitment to myself uh, to never give up on my dreams and my goals. And my mom would even tell me all the time, like you, you know, the, you know, the um, reach for the stars, reach for the stars, she would always say, you know, be aware of your surroundings, go for this, go for that. And so, I just growing up with a single mom and um, having a lot of time, a lot of time to myself and I had to raise myself. I just, I developed that strength at a very young age. And I also was very humbled in the same moment too. So coming into um, uh, when I was 18, I actually packed up my bags and I moved out to San Diego with $760 in my pocket. That's wow. when it first started. So I moved out here. I, I was in the mortgage industry. I was actually a telemarketer for a mortgage company from Indianapolis. <laughs> okay. and diversified mortgage. I don't know if you remember them. They were around for I a do. while. They were yep. out of Ohio. And I was a telemarketer there and I was their top telemarketer, but I wanted to come out to San Diego to also go to college, but I had to pay for my own school, right? And I couldn't afford school back in Indianapolis. So I did come out here. They have junior colleges out in, in San Diego. So I, I went to, I, I signed up at a local junior college and I was the mortgage company's telemarketer out here in San Diego. So that's kind of where it was all birthed. And I used to literally go down to the courthouse eight hours a day. I would write down, I'd go through the uh, data and I would write down the name, address, and the interest rates of people that I'd have to go to the crisscross book and I'd have to extract out their phone numbers and put it on that <laughs> three by five card. And wow. then the telemarketers back in Indianapolis would call those people and set appointments for the loan officers to do second TVs and some hard wow. loans. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So I, I lived out in San Diego. I lived in San Francisco. And when the market crashed in 92 is when, like, literally I showed up. I was in the mortgage business. I was a loan officer slash loan processor. I was doing both jobs for a credit, a, a company that uh, we had the accounts of, like, uh, some big um, companies at that time. So we were doing a lot of employee loans and refis and purchases. And I literally showed up to the front door. Now, mind you, I was... 22 years old, making almost six figures that year. Very young awesome. age to be making that kind of money, but I was. Showed up to the door and it was locked. The market literally shifted almost overnight. And when that happened, my mom's health wasn't very good. And I said, you know what? I need to go back to Indy. I'm just, I'm going to go back to Indy. So I packed up again and I moved <laughs> up to Indiana. So 
um, that's how I ended back. But I had always, I always knew that I would be back out here. I just didn't know how I was going to get back out here. And so fast forward, when I moved back, um, my family's business was inside an office building that had another builder in there. And they were on the top floor and uh, their mortgage company was on the first floor. So I went back and I worked for their mortgage company, actually. Okay. And so when I did that, um, how the new home, uh, the new home dream was birthed is that, again, out in California, I was making almost six figures that year. I think my, uh, I think I made $92,000 and this was back in 92. 91, sorry, so I was 21 and a half, almost almost 22. And so when I moved back to Indy, I I couldn't get a job making more than 25,000 a year. Now I know <laughs> that back then it was decent money, but I, I was like, oh my God, this is like panic mode for me. Like I <laughs> yeah. can't work for somebody only making 25,000 a year, right? But I did it for the interim and then I had, um, I did a loan for a sales consultant for this national home builder. And when I saw her W-2, it came across my desk. I'm like, that's what I need to do. I need to sell home. <laughs> I got to get, them, I gotta get back up to that income level, right? And that's what I did. So I went and I interviewed with the salesperson, the sales manager. I met him out in the hallway and I said, hey, if you guys have any positions open as a, as a uh, salesperson, I'd love the opportunity to interview with you. Like at 20, 21, 22 years old, I was already like, hey. And he kind of looked at me and he's like, well, go get some experience somewhere else and then let me know. That's exactly okay. what he said to me. And I thought, okay, game on. Like, right? So, <laughs> yeah, right. you know, I mean, I felt like he literally, I mean, said, yeah, whatever, it kind of laughed me off. Like you look right. you're just, you know, and so um so I took that information, the competitive nature in me, and I went back and I did as much research as I could. I'm like, I want to know who all the builders are, I want to know who the best are. Um and so I went back, I quit that job, right? And so I started door knocking on the bill on the doorstep of the builders. I started cold calling wow, okay. builders, right? And so um, I didn't know about Estridge at that time, but I knew that I knew that without a college degree, because I didn't have a college degree, okay, back in Indy, like to get in the pharmaceutical sales or new home sales, like you had to have a degree. Like everybody wanted you to have a degree, right? And I thought, okay, I'm going to have to come in the back door somewhere. I got to show my numbers. I got to show, prove my worth, right? right and right. so... What I did is I knocked on the door of a small builder that was just getting up and going and called Biltmore Homes. I don't know if you oh, remember yeah. them or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Yep. And so um, I went in, I interviewed with the owners um, at one of the sales models and I got the job and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing, but no training. So I just <laughs> over here, you can sell, no problem, you know? You're, you're pretty enough. You got this, right? <laughs> yeah, and so, yeah. But, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Right. Right? And because I had that mortgage background, because I was the telemarketer for, you know, through high school, and because I went and I did all that handwork, uh, well, it was before, yeah, when I did all the handwork with the stuff in San Diego, right. and understanding notes and payments and 40-year mortgages and stuff, that's what I use. Nobody gave me scripts. Nobody gave me scripts. I got a model home. I showed up. I sat at the desk and I was like, okay, what do I do now? So when people would come in, I had my floor plans up and I went and I made a payment for each floor plan. Okay. And that's how I sold. I sold 56 houses my first year. That's With awesome. No training. Yeah. yeah. Self-training. Except for the mortgage side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you had you, you're a good salesperson and you're and you're highly motivated. So you you do what we all do. You go, what do I have to do to make this work? And you figure it out. And that's what you did. And sometimes that might be better. Yeah, you had to figure it out. If somebody wanted to get a hold of you for any real estate needs, now are you in Indiana yet, or are you coming this way to have an no, office? No, it's still um, it's still on the back burner. Okay. Still on the back okay. burner. I mean, it definitely it, could possibly come come together. 
Um, right now, I'm last year was really building out the systems and and processes that I need to have all together to make it a an environment that agents can come in and and learn and thrive in. And then we'll take this and duplicate it back in Indianapolis, most likely. Okay. So how would somebody get a hold of you if they're looking for real estate in California? And actually, we're specific in California. How would they get a hold of you? So I'm actually in Temecula. It's uh, just north of North County, San Diego. So we serve Riverside and San Diego counties. And if they need to connect with me, just come to uh, MeekerRealtyGroup.com. They can get a hold of me fairly easy okay. right there. Or Google. Meeker Real or Estate Group. Google. Yeah. Yeah. And it's M-E-E-K-E-R. Meeker Real Estate yes. Group. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And to get a hold of Ian or I, go to HardworkingMortgageGuys.com. That's HardworkingMortgageGuys.com. And we always ask one question. It's a little off the subject, but we... We love to ask this question, and if anybody is looking behind me, they can tell I'm kind of a car guy. Um, what was your first car? Oh, my gosh. My first car was a Toyota Celica GT, 1977. Oh, GT. Okay. GT. <laughs> and you love that car, I can tell. You know what? It was it, – it, it, did, it did the job. <laughs> <laughs> I inherited it from my brother, so we'll leave it at that. It it, it rolled down the street. (laughs) (laughs) It's funny because everybody has interesting memories of their first car. Most people, like, and and there's two kinds of first cars. It's the first car you have that your parents kind of give you or whatever, and then the first car you actually go out and get yourself. But it's that very first car that tends to have a, I don't know, a special place in your heart. For some reason, we kind of, at least I do. I love cars, so I get attached to them. Ian loves cars. He gets attached to them. So it's I just kind of how it is. Yeah, yeah do you? I love cars. I, mean, I always say, you know, I mean, some girls, you know, they've got their shoes and their other stuff. I've got my cars. I love cars. Yeah. that's. Do you have anything special right now, car, car-wise? Uh, let's see here. I have, um, I do have my mom car, and it's not a minivan. I do. I have an SL550. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's a mom car. Of course, your kids yeah. are your kids are not sitting around home, and they're probably too big to fit in that car anyway. So, uh, yeah, Jim Jim doesn't fit in there very well. He, he, I didn't he think so. Them in. <laughs> um, and then the boys are they fit in there? They fit in there. Nathan's a little tall. Nathan's um six five, a little over six five. So. so yeah, I knew I knew from the pictures they look pretty tall, and I knew J- Jim's. A, a big guy. So I figure, you know, tall wise. Um, so what are you known for or what is your superpower? As you look at real estate, what's your superpower? I guess, you know, I would say, um, I'm not sure if it's just one power. It's all mixed into one per se. I would just say motivation, drive, uh, just being consistent, you know, when you don't want to get up, you got to get up, you got to go, you know, but I think for me, it's really just being consistent, Rick, you know, getting back to the basics, staying with the basics and be consistent and just because that's your, that's your platform, right? So, you know, I always say when I get on stage, I'm on stage, like you can't not take, you can't take me off stage, right? And right. so what I mean by that is when I'm performing, I perform. And I will always perform at the highest level. And the only reason I got, the only way I got here was by being consistent, sticking with the basics, and adding on and complementing my tool belt with the other tools that I need to be successful. Right. As you grow, you, you, we all have to do that. Yeah. As you or grow, as that's you what fail. you have to do. But yes. also as you fail, too. Because if you don't have a system, right, and you haven't developed the right uh environment for yourself to thrive when you do fail you tend to derail right right and so um you can always talk yourself out of something it's a lot easier for us to talk ourselves out of something than it is to talk ourselves into something yes and and you know with the fail i think that's important because a lot of uh, pretty much everybody who is successful has failed and Yes. Yeah. And 
And so anybody, like if there's real estate agents that go, you know, that are listening and they're struggling today because it is a different market, they need to understand we've all failed. It's changing, figuring out why you're failing and changing what you need to change, figuring out what is working and keep doing what's working and listening to mentors. You need mentors. Do you, do you have any mentors or have you had mentors through your career? Yeah. I mean, absolutely, and, and mentors are, they're, they're just critical, right? A coach, a mentor, someone right. you look up to. Put yourself in rooms that are so uncomfortable that it forces you to grow, right? And right. so, you know, whether it's today being in the industry for 30-something plus years, or when I first got started, I always, or, or being with that first builder, I've always forced myself, if I want to get what I want, if it doesn't scare the holy crap out of me, I don't do it. If the room doesn't scare the holy crap out of me, I don't go in, right? Because somebody else's comfort level is going to be somebody else's painful level, right? Yeah. yeah. Right? You know, um, and, and I just, you know, want to, invite everyone to try to think that way no matter where you are what stage of your life you're in no matter what industry you're in if you're an agent or you know whatever you're doing just get a little bit uncomfortable every day more uncomfortable every day do athletes get to where they're at because they because they don't have a coach no they have no, a coach. They, mm -hmm. they have a mentor right and yeah. for the you know, beginning agent or a solo agent that might not have the income to afford a coach. Nowadays, having YouTube there, a lot of coaches put their content out there for free, right? Right. And you can go on, you can Google, you know, even agents like myself and like you, you know, as a, as a lender, you know, we're putting content out there to help other agents grow, right? Yeah, that, that's a lot what this show's about. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those things we, we want to accomplish is, is help that. You know, one of the things um, as you as you look at it and you're if somebody's going through these struggles, I've had many agents on here who's who's said, hey, call me. I'll help you. I mean, it's amazing the community that we have. And how about you probably have I know you have a big a team. What's your team set up? And I'm sure that you have plenty of agents you're helping at this point in time. You're mentoring. Yeah, so uh, what where we're at is, you know, I do have, I have what I call a team brokerage. It's a little bit different than, you know, the good old team. I think we've come so far uh, from when we were all trying to start up teams, you know, five, six, seven years ago. And then before that, in the real estate community, it was partners, right? You had two right. agents that worked together. You have your own book of business. But if you have, you can't show a property or not able to get some, to something, your, your partner would, right. your business partner would go show that property, right? Well, we've evolved right. into these teams because, again, of leverage, right? So where we're at now, why I call myself a team brokerage is I have, we've put together systems and processes and a community within a community of the brokerage to be able to facilitate a uh, uh a, uh, I'm going to call it a community because I prefer to call it a community where agents can come in and they can collaborate, they can learn, and they they get the secret sauce, right? We're opening right. up our playbooks, right? And saying, you know, if you are looking to do this, this is what you need to do. So we're also providing coaching and guidance, but it's all based off of putting together an environment that, that people can come into and thrive versus having the door shut. Right. I mean, right. gosh, Rick, when you and I first got started, um, I mean, just in our sales meetings, having you and Dave there and other people that had quite a bit of experience with car sales and their background and just being able to listen to you guys talk. I was a, I was a sponge. You have to be a sponge, right? So the right. team brokerage is set up where we're, we're facilitating an environment that everyone can feel safe and come in and learn under and then yeah. take their businesses to the next level. You're not building my business, right? It's not Kim Meeker team. It's Meeker Realty Group as a group in a community. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, and it's important, uh, mentors, I've mentioned this before, but my son brought it up to me and I had never thought of it. He says, 
that there's there's horizontal uh, mentors and there's vertical me mentors. So you're what you just mentioned is when we work together, you say, you would say things. Other uh, Lisa would say things. Other people would say things, and you, and I'd go, okay, how do I implement that in my structure? So you were mentoring at that point me, and I would mention something, and maybe you did the same thing or somebody else did, and that's a that's that's the the you know horizontal but the vertical is then when somebody else comes in and it is tough and it has changed i remember i won't mention his name but when i started i wanted to do follow up and he had all these letters and he was the manager he had moved from sales to management and he wouldn't give me his letters he wouldn't let me use them cuz he made them <laughs> he didn't realize we were all on the same team today he would but that's just what happened back then but you do need those strong mentors to help you become successful it's not it's it's not a negative it's a huge positive and you'll become a mentor too so it's it's extremely it's it's just what you have to do in my opinion yeah so we actually bring in agents um to the team and then i can also bring them into the brokerage they can be both they can be on our team brokerage or they can be just at the brokerage and i mentor them either way right so they're going to get the support and the knowledge, and they know that somebody's there and in their core, right? They don't right. have to do this business alone. And, right. you know, there's still some of that going on today where people don't want to open up their playbooks. And that's okay, right? That's that's totally okay. But we then we get into um, a growth mindset or a fear mindset, right? Yes. And I think that's that's a big piece of it right there. I think you hit that dead on. There's people who... They don't think there's enough out there. I, I'm sure that you feel the same way. I've been doing this long enough that I realize there's more than enough out there. I don't have gotcha. to worry about somebody else. I just just do mine, and they, them getting them getting the deal didn't take one away from me. Right? No, and in fact, you know, it could even help you bring many more to your, to right. your to the bottom line, right? Because yeah. If you're positive and you're, you know, you're upbeat and you're, you have that growth mindset, you stick in that, in that space. You know, I always tell, I tell the team as well, if you, and my, my boys, it actually started with my mom did it to me, but I, I gave it to my boys as well. Every day that they would leave for school, I would tell them, go make sure you smile at somebody today. And you know, the thing is they never they never looked at me like, okay, mom, whatever. You know, they never made me feel <laughs> awkward for saying that. I'm like, one of right. these days they're just say, okay, mom, cool, check out, you know, whatever. But they always, it just reminds you to stay in that space of giving, right? And so if right. you're a giver, if you're a giver, you're going to give, 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 give. And others, even if they take, it's okay. It's okay. Eventually they'll start to give too. It's just, you pass, you pass the baton. Right? Yes. And so and who you give? You know Go ahead. If you're having a bad day or a good day, it doesn't matter. Just pay it forward. Pay it forward. Just smile for some smile at someone because you just never know what kind of day they're having. Yeah. And who you give to doesn't mean that's where you're going to get something back from. But it does come back. It just may be from some other area. It may, may be from somebody else. You just never know. So you don't worry about it. You just do it. That's why we do this. That's part of what this is. This is about giving to real estate agents. Some will, some won't. That's okay. But we want to help. We we think everybody, you know, people need the help right now. And so that's why we're doing it. Right. right. And I so we think it. that's I mean, important. It's, it's so important. It's so important. It's just, you know, there's so many opportunities out there that um, we can all win together. Right. 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 And that's a better celebration, winning together, I yeah. think. Yeah. So what what key activities would you recommend a realtor invest their time in? What key activities would I recommend? Key activities. Time? What key activities would you suggest a, a, a recommend a realtor invest their time in? Sure. Oh, my gosh. So... Going into 2023, do you want me to just kind of head into the 2023? Yeah, that'd be good. What's yeah. Make that different for them. So the key, the key is just, you know, get your goals up and visual, number one. You know, um, well, actually, number one should be your calendar, right? 
You need to Absolutely. be selfish in order to be selfless. So get your calendar out in front of you. You know, get up early. Don't sleep in until 8, 9 o'clock in the morning, right? Get up early. Invest some time into yourself first. You know, read, you know, do a workout. Make sure you got your diet on point. Drink your water, right? And then right. from there, start your day, right? Um, right. But get your get your goals up and visual. And, you know, Rick, this started back again, you know, back in my days working with you all. And, you know, I don't know whose idea it was, but I got it at one of our sales meetings was the mirror, right? Putting your goals up on the mirror. And so, and then right. and one of our friends that we worked with, we used to use like our eyeliner and our lipstick. I never <laughs> used my eyeliner. <laughs> <laughs> But, but until I figured out that the expo markers actually work on your mirror. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, but just get them up. And I like my mirror. I love my mirror because it's something I see every single day, whether I brush my teeth or brush my hair, I'm in front of my mirror, right? And so right. get your goals up there. Get your financial goals up there. Get your, get your prospecting goals up there, right? Um, the next thing is, is for 2023, you have to go on more appointments. You know, what you did in 2021, 2022, uh, whether you're a brand new agent or I can speak to both fields here, whether you're brand new or a, a, an existing agent, 2021, 2022, while it was very difficult because we had to pivot, right, going into a pandemic, right. you're going to need more appointments. Um, and those appointments, then you, you also want to have and go through what your uh, what your um, your lead generation pillars are going to be, right? So right. I would say calendar, goals, and then you need to set more appointments. But in order to get the appointments, agents are going to be like, well, but I, I'm a brand new agent. I don't have any clients. Where do I get my clients? Well, sit down with your mentor, sit down and go through and get yourself two or three lead pillars. You don't need... 16 like I have right now, right? I right. just need like two or three lead pillars. Keep it simple. Stick to the basics. Right. And, you know, those lead pillars can consist of, as an agent, I love open houses. You know, coming from our background, I can right. go through, still even to today, I can go through a brand new neighborhood and I can file away the elevations. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I just have this. You know, I don't know. It's just burnt into we were my trained brain. That way. We were trained that way. But yep. I can. So for farming and open houses, for me, I'm super comfortable because right. of having all those years of just having that and being trained on elevations. But um, so your lead pillars, no more than three. Um, and if you only are comfortable doing two, then just do two. There's no right or wrong. I just wouldn't do more than three. Um you also really want to establish and, and get all your past clients down and on paper, right? And, and know, right. Um, you know, and again, brand new agent might not have past clients, but you do. If you download, and there's an app that you can actually download all your contacts into your, from your phone into yep. a spreadsheet. You go through, you clean that out, and you call 10 people a week on that list. And you set an appointment, you know, try to go for two a week or three a week with people that already know, like, and trust you, yeah. maybe even love you, you know, for family wise. And you just right. have a, you know, you offer to bring them pizza and soda over and say, can I have 30 minutes of your time? I just want to talk to you about your real estate needs. I'm not going to sell you a house. I'm not even looking to list your home. I'm just training. It's that's basic. Right. Yes. And then for yep. those that already have the past clients, you have to follow up quarterly with them. You want to do pot buys for, with them. If you have a conversion ratio of one in five, for example, now this is agents that are more established that have the past clientele. If you're contacting them every single quarter and you're calling to be their real estate advisor, right, you should end up with one transaction per quarter just from one in five. On right. Yeah. Right. So yep. if you do that every quarter um, and you're calling, you know, I'm not, I don't have my calculator in front of me, but if you're calling, um, let's say, 
20 people that might know, like, and trust you. And some people might not only know five people, okay? Just do right. the math. But if you're connecting with them, you should be able to extract an extra five to seven transactions that year from there. Because the people right. that are referring business to you are a lot easier to convert versus the colder lead, right? Right. right. And once you do that, then those people that you've just worked with are, if you do a good job, are likely to get then refer you to. And that's how you build your business. You build it slowly. And it isn't necessarily slowly, but that's how you do it. I find what you said, it's funny because you and I do exactly the same thing. You know, you have to have your schedule. You have to have your calendar. You have to, we have certain times. You call people all day long and you just do it and you it's not, once you start doing it, it's pretty, it's you actually, if you miss a day, you miss it because it's really helpful. And we, I, I even have. Cranky. I can't do my follow up. I truly get super cranky. I, I right. get irritable and I get cranky because I know how important that is to move the needle. Right. In yes. Business, um, yep. Versus going to hiding underneath a shell somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I get super cranky because I just know, like, I love to be in front of people. I love to be. You know what I love? I love taking care of people. Right. Yeah, you always were. I mean, that's what you always did. It, it's it, and it's I, that always comes across, and it's it, and it does. It, it you just don't feel the same because you know you're not doing the things to help others, and it's really up to us to do that because they don't know. Um, the um, another another question, um, you know, if if someone's looking to hire a real estate agent. You know, what is it that they, what, you know, what should they look for to, when they're looking to hire somebody? Like, so I'm, I'm thinking about listing my house or I'm thinking about buying a house. I'm going to, I don't have an agent. I'm going to look for an agent. How, what should I do? What, what would you recommend? So it depends if they've sold a home before or not, because if they've sold a house before, my first question to them would be, what are you looking for in an agent? You know, how, you know, if they had a great experience, what can I do to duplicate and make that experience still, you know, a good experience for you? If they had a bad, I don't want them to go down the rabbit hole and tell me all this bad stuff that happened, but right. you know, I go more into, I meet them where they're at. Right. Okay. And so, yep. you know, what's important to you when hiring a real estate professional? I think it's okay. really important to know your keywords when you do that as well, because a professional is someone that's going to have all the tools to make your, your experience a better one. So that's probably the first question is I would ask myself, what's important to me when hiring a real estate professional? I would write that down and then I would ask the agent, you know, share with me, um, you know, if this was important to me, how would you handle this? Uh, I've had, I, I tend to work best with people that do this. Are you some, are you able to accommodate my needs here? Right. And then from yeah. there, you know, what's, you know, part of that, what's important to you, is it going to be experience, right? Is it going to be marketing, communication? Those are typically your first top three. Okay. Yeah. And, and, you know, it, it's I, it's vital that people understand that. And the best way to find out is from people who do, do are in the business. I want to go back to what we were talking about before. Just add, if there's agents out there in Indiana that are looking for help in that area of follow up and that type of thing, we actually have something called Ride the Wave, which is a warm referral program. And it's all about follow up. OK, it's totally about follow up. And and because a lot of people. You can you can call people you've cold called your whole life so you don't have a problem with that. Some people are scared to death to do that, but even some people just I find a lot of agents don't even have a good follow up system from the time they close on. And and I've talked to some they have for the first month they have a good follow up system, but then they then it it goes away. And so our system I can actually help people set it up. And as you you mentioned, I, I've been doing follow up. For 30 years <laughs> that's what i do i can help set it up to make it make it work for them and so it's those are the kind of things that are important that people do and even if they just want to talk to somebody about how to do it i can help do that but i, I just thought yeah i probably should mention that because it's important i think it, it's very helpful to people um we are coming up on our on the end of the show so if, kim if somebody wanted to get a hold of you how would they get a hold of you what's the best way um, yeah, so I'm actually in an area called Temecula, California. We are the eighth top wine destination in the United States, just so you know. 
And wow. so, uh, but we're in Southern California. So Temecula is just north of, of San Diego. Uh, you can Google us at MeekerRealtyGroup.com. Um, and then also go to my page, which is Kim Meeker. I find that's probably the easiest just to go to Google and you can reach directly out to me. Um, my direct cell number, um, well, just go to Google. It's going to be easier for you. Or you can actually call 951-456-4307 is another way to reach me as well. And we'll put it all in. And so if somebody's, if they're looking at, they're, they're driving down the road, they can't. But if they go to the, the, the podcast or the video, we're going to have all that information up also. Um, if you well, need to get a hold of the inner eye, go ahead. Real yeah. quick too, Rick, if I, if I may. You know, the other thing with, with how we're all set up and accessible nowadays as well, no matter where you are, um, whether you're in Canada, the United States, or another country, it's okay. I'm here to help. You don't just have to be in California. You can be anywhere as an agent. Always reach out to me, um, and I'll be of service to you. I'm here to help. Awesome. Well, we, I think that's awesome. I, I, and I find all top agents are like that. It's amazing. You think that they're they're hard to get a hold of, and they really are there to help. Every single one has been that way, so that's awesome, and we appreciate that. If you need to get a hold of Ian or I, it's hardworkingmortgageguys.com. That's hardworkingmortgageguys.com. And, Kim, thanks so much for joining us. I know you're busy, and we do appreciate you taking your time out. Thank you very much. My pleasure.